Hey, what's up all of our Liberty loving friends? This is Nate Thurston with Good Morning Liberty. I'm sitting down with the one and only Larry Sharp of the Sharp Way. How you doing, Larry? Uh, I am the one and only, thank you and good morning. Yeah. In fact, if you Google Larry Sharp, there used to be a wrestler named okay. Larry Sharp. He was, his name was Pretty Boy Larry Sharp. I loved him because he had my name. Yeah. He wrestled in the 70s, then he retired. His name actually wasn't Larry Sharp, it was actually Larry Wheel. For some reason, he changed his name to Larry Sharp. Sure. I have no idea why. With an E? With an E. Everything. Like my name. Like, wow. As if he knew who I was. He okay. did not know who I was. But as <laughs> if he knew what I, who I was, he changed his name. Then he retired and started um, the Monster Factory, which was a training facility for people who wanted to be wrestlers. Okay. So he used to always pop up first when people would put in Larry Sharp. Sadly, but maybe in a kind of sick way, good, he passed away in 2018. Okay. And when he passed away, all of a sudden, I became the Larry Sharp of the internet. So there you I go. have usurped the king, and now <laughs> I, have, I am now the king of Larry Sharp. Now, you see, I was correct. Yes. The one and only Larry correct. Sharp. I am there now, you go. I am now uh, the one and only Larry Sharp. R.I.P. Other Larry Sharp. Yes. Rip well. Larry Wheel <laughs> slash AKA Larry Sharp. <laughs> For anyone uh, who doesn't know, give us your you know 30 second uh, elevator pitch. I'm a professional wrestler who retired. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, kidding, kidding. I'm not. Yes, no. Um, no. Uh, I've, I am. Uh, I ran for governor twice in New York, 2018, 2022. I did not win. I'm not the governor. You're not. I'm not the governor. Okay. Um, so I did not win, but I busted my rump to make things happen because I really want to change the country. And I think the only way we can do it is through independent parties. It's through third parties. The two party system is literally wrecking us. It is tearing our country apart. We're getting nothing done. We're focusing on other guy bad and not solving issues. And people are begging their king to defend them, which means we keep surrendering our liberties out of fear. Yeah. Again and again and again. And as long as they keep us afraid of, of the other, mm -hmm. we keep giving up our freedoms and it's making our country worse and worse. Well, I heard this time uh, Trump is actually going to decrease the size and scope and power of the government. And I believe him completely. Yes. I totally trust yeah. all government people <laughs> to do that. Yeah, not. Who knows? Look, is it possible? And I know a lot of people say that they, they think their guy is better. And maybe they are, right? Maybe Trump is better than Biden. I'm not going to fight that issue. My issue is remember something. Bush gave us Obama. Obama gave us Trump. Trump gave us Biden. Mm -hmm. It's just swapping back and forth. Nobody's really winning except for them. Yeah. So how much decay do you get in four years? A whole lot of decay, some decay. But it's decay and rot no matter what. We have 25 years of this. And so great, you get uh, whatever. You get Trump to win this time. Wonderful. Then you get President AOC in four years. Right? Or you get Biden again. Great. Gavin then you get, Newsom. Then you, yeah, then you yeah. get, you know, whatever. President, I don't know, Ted Cruz or MTG, whatever. Yeah. You, get a, you, you get left and right back and forth. And even though many of them might have begun or started in a way that wanted to help, maybe they actually cared. To be forward, AOC is my congressperson. I accept your condolences. <laughs> so, so, yeah. Do I think that AOC walked in the door thinking, I'm going to trash America? I don't. I think she walked in the door thinking, I'm gonna do good, I'm gonna help my community. I thought she believed that. Look at her now. Yeah, yeah. So do I really think they're gonna do the thing they say? <clears throat> so you, uh, you always think third party is the way to go. Yes. Never, never Republican. Never, Democrat. never. And I'm gonna okay. say something that will make some of your listeners just probably jump out of their skin. I said this public and I will say it again. If I was in a spot where I'd had to vote and it was Democrat, Republican, and Cornell West was the only guy who wasn't Democrat Republican, I would vote Cornel West. Yikes. Yes, yes, why? But here's the reason why. Not because I agree, like I, personally I know Cornel West, I love him, he's a great guy. His policies and mine are almost opposites. I mean, they're yeah. almost opposites, yeah. right? However, someone has to break a hole in the system so the rest of us can move through. Mm. So let's say Cornel West got 10, 20% at any given race, in any given state. Well, that then makes third parties more realistic. So now we got a shot at getting independent parties. We got a shot at getting libertarians elected. We have a chance again. I'm in a spot right now in my state, New York, where I will never be able to vote for a libertarian ever. I'm not joking when I say that, guys. There is literally no chance of me ever getting a libertarian on the line. People go, Larry, you can write in. I tried that. Most state governments decide who is eligible for a write-in. That doesn't seem... It's not constitutional at all, okay. but they still do it. So they don't even count the write-ins. So I have no shot. We have to break this system. Now, New York, didn't they? I don't know if this was in response to you or it someone was. else. That, okay, so you did get a law passed. Yes. In New York. Yeah. And um, I'm gonna, I'll tell you a story. In 2018, I actually got the Libertarian Party to be an actual party 
recognized in New York State. Got 2% of the vote, got on the ballot, the whole deal. So then the next year, I didn't just surrender. I actually crossed the state next the next year, supported local candidates. We had 107 local libertarians win. We went from zero libertarians in 2018 to 107, all local. You know, school boards, water boards, city council, all local. But that's how you start. That's grassroots. That's how you begin. One, zero to 107. That next year, the Democratic Party said, uh-oh. Um, we're going to change all the rules. They changed all the rules mid-cycle during the lockdowns so that we couldn't even fight them and destroyed my entire party gone. So then once they changed those rules, in 2022, I ran again trying to fix it. Say, I'm going to go against your rules and do it anyway. We did eight lawsuits, lost all eight, four state, four federal. I dropped 400 grand that I mm. raised. Yes, it's insane. Mm. The Supreme Court would not see our case at all. And then the Republicans used those laws to sue me off the ballot. So the Democrats made the laws to remove me from the ballot. Republicans then used those laws to sue me off the ballot. And they lied and said, well, the reason why they did it was to get rid of the Working Families Party. That was the lie they told the press in New York State. Okay. But the Working Families Party supports the Democratic Party, supported the Governor Cuomo at the time, and supports Kathy Hochul, and still exists. Okay. So none of it worked. They still support Democrats. That was a lie. They actually wanted to get rid of all third parties, and they did. Now, the, the, you said Supreme Court declined to hear it. I, yep. Is that because you were running for state office? And yep. Would it be different if it were someone running for federal office? Look, you think? I, I think the best person, and it makes me angry again, I don't care, I'm going to say it, the best person to have any chance at impact this year is actually Bobby Kennedy Jr. Okay. RFK Jr. is the best chance to make impact. Why? Because he's a Kennedy. And I know <laughs> people can't stand that, but it's true. If yeah. I was a Kennedy, Supreme Court would have heard, heard my case. Yeah. I'm not a Kennedy. I'm some guy. Just to be clear, that's not you saying that you're voting for Kennedy. No, I would. Yeah. Yeah, 100% I would. Okay. okay. Same thing as about Cornel West. Yes. If he's the only guy, yes. Yeah. 100% I would. Yes. If there is a libertarian candidate, though. Not in my state. Yeah. Well, I got you. Yeah, not in my state. I already forgot about yeah, that. Yeah, we part. don't have that. I, I, yeah. don't, I cannot vote libertarian. <laughs> okay. I cannot. Literally, I cannot. I got um, you. This is why I must break the system or I will never be able to. Yeah. Okay. So, no, I can't. Yeah, I do think it's going to be beneficial for him going around trying to get ballot access in all these places. 100%. He's, he's got a lot of money. He's got a lot of name uh, recognition. He's got tens so. of millions of dollars and a Kennedy name. Yeah. He is the... Usually, I just blandly would just, oh, go vote Libertarian, whatever. Now I'm thinking, no, I, this is the one time we can make impact. We can break the system. We can actually make it to where people go, oh, all right. In 2018, I broke a hole in New York State. And people ran through, 107 people ran through the hole I broke. Mm -hmm. Right? I've seen it happen. We get someone who can break a hole. The rest of us can run through. So after the convention, the LP convention, by the way, um, I actually joined my state party after that. I Congrats. was not a member at all. Nice. You've been talking to me, uh, you know, a couple times we talked about joining. Uh, I'm a member of the party too. I'm a lifetime member. And, um, and so... I, some people might have made the opposite decision after after the convention, people but I get decided upset. that if you're if you you don't like what's happening, sometimes that means you should get involved and not just complain on the it. internet, you know. And so your your debate that you have. So I just heard something that's mind blowing. Netflix has more than eighteen thousand titles globally. But only like 6,000 of those are available in the U.S. You're missing out on literally thousands of great shows unless you use ExpressVPN. Netflix hides content from you based on your location, but ExpressVPN lets you change your online location so you can control where you want Netflix to think you're located. They've got servers in over 100 countries so you can gain access to thousands of new shows and never run out of stuff to watch. This works with many other streaming services too, by the way, Disney Plus, BBC iPlayer, and more. And by the way, you can go to this, I, I was just checking out this website and uh, I know some stuff I'm gonna be watching pretty soon. You can go to unogs.com to see some of these titles uh, that you would only be able to watch in other countries. On Netflix, you could watch The Office if you change your location to Canada. I noticed also that you can watch House if you change your location to Canada, that's my favorite show. I watch it every single night when I go to bed. And right now I'm suffering through advertisements on a different streaming platform. So you can check out that website too. And I'll put a link in the show notes for you if you want to look and see what other shows are on there. It's easy to use. You just fire up the app and you click one button to change locations. Works on all your devices, phones, laptops, tablets, smart TVs, and more. Really fast speeds. We stream today's show 
while we are connected to ExpressVPN. Can't tell the difference. You can stream in HD, no buffering. Rated number one by top tech reviewers like CNET and The Verge. ExpressVPN also keeps you private and secure by rerouting all your traffic through an encrypted tunnel. So like I said, there's tons of titles on here that I can watch. The Office is one of my favorites. House is my all-time favorite show, and neither one of those are on Netflix right now. I'm going to put a link in the show notes so you can check that out. So to be smart, stop paying full price for streaming services and only getting access to a fraction of their content. Get your money's worth at expressvpn.com slash gml. Don't forget to use our link at expressvpn.com slash gml. It's expressvpn.com slash gml to get an extra three months of expressvpn for free the vp debate the vp debate yes. that you had you said something in that that uh actually you got me like right from the spot look at which that which was that you stick around yep you're not one of these influencer people who come in expect everyone to yep you know love them and vote for them already yep. and and then when you lose guess what they're gone yep afterwards happens all the time see Could every, you tell i mean not everyone got to hear that so <clears throat> see them every four years yeah they come in and go hi i'm some cool uh, you know guy either one of two things happens they either get popular doing some podcast thing mm -hmm. and they don't actually talk about any policy they they spew libertarian views which is nice i'm not against it they're very we need advocates mm -hmm. we need activists so i'm happy they're spewing the philosophy but they're not spewing actual policy. Yeah. They're saying this guy's bad, liberty's better. Awesome, true, accurate statements, happy to hear it. Yeah. But then they come in and they want everyone to vote for them because of that, which is awesome. And, and, and if they get elected, I mean, they get nominated, they then run for something, get slaughtered because they have no policy, mm -hmm. but become popular within a movement, show up every two or four years to stay popular, and then take that to go on other, other podcasts to be more popular. Mm -hmm. So they make lots of money. They don't help any candidates. They don't help the party. If you remember that, what I said when I, at that debate, I literally asked the room, I said, who has received a phone call from me? Over half of the, of the room raised their hands because I call them trying to support the candidates, trying to raise money from them, trying to get them to show up at events. I literally support candidates. Literally, I'm on the phone calling people supporting candidates. I asked, I said, how many people have seen me raise money for a candidate? Over half the room, I raise money for candidates. I will show up at an event. I will MC an event. I will actually do these things. That's how you build infrastructure. That's how you build the party. I talk about the party. The liberty movement's very important, but it's not the party. It's two separate things, mm -hmm. right? The, the party is part of the movement. The party cannot survive without the movement. So never think I'm dissing a a activists. We need them desperately. We need more of them. Yeah. We also, this is in addition to, this is a yes and, <laughs> we also need candidates who can talk about policy and can support candidates, right? As a, I, I talk about the VP spot. I said it's a support, it's a support staff position. It's not a I'm cooler than you position. Yeah. Right. And we often want to be the cool guy in the room. Awesome. Go sit in the podcast. Be cool. Have people give you money. Have people come to the movement. But then once you're in the party, support the candidate. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we have to take our hats on and off. Right. So I can do my cool podcast. Be cool guy. Now there's a candidate. Take my cool guy hat off, and grind. Yeah. And help the candidate get where they need to go. Build their policy out, build out things like that, call their donor base, raise money. That's that's the meat and potatoes of campaigning that I hate to say Democrats, Republicans have that down. Yeah. We don't. No. <laughs> we don't. Uh, uh, Senator uh, Eric Brakey was here before. You, you oh, know, you I know, love him. You know, Eric. Yeah. Yes. He said. Uh, Maine to New Hampshire. Yeah. He's yes. From New Hampshire. He said that. Uh, Libertarians don't really aren't really concerned with winning because then you'd have to take accountability afterwards for what happens. It's yes. a lot easier to be a martyr, to vote your it conscience, and never actually win. And then you get to complain about everything else going on and be the person who's right, but never actually in charge of anything. A hundred percent. Our party is that? full of virtue signalers, and the problem is we act like those other guys are all virtue signalers. No, no, no. look in the mirror, homeboy. Look at the mirror, homeboy, it's you. Yeah. They're far more worried about virtue signaling than anything else. And don't get me wrong, I, virtue signaling can be important, right? I voted for Joe Jorgensen in 2020. I knew she wasn't gonna win. Mm -hmm. I knew she wasn't gonna make an impact in New York. It was a virtue signal, yeah. but I don't mind, I'll say it. Why? I had no other option. Yeah. I, my choice was, I'm, again, I live in New York State. The Democrat is going to win. We are three to one Democrat to Republican. In my city, six to one Democrat to Republican. Mm. Where I live, my city, state, and federal reps 
are all Democrats and all members of the DSA, Democratic Socialists of America. The Republican Party at the local level has not run a candidate in my district district in 10 years. Okay. Democrats win. Yeah, yeah. That's how that works. So it's third party or it's nothing. So I vote third party. Yeah. And sometimes it's a virtual signal. And sometimes it's not. But my goal isn't virtual signal. My goal is impact. People ask me all the time, Larry, why don't you run for this or run for that? Why? Why? <laughs> I, well, you could run against AOC. Why? I'm not going to win. I'm, now I'm going to go around asking for money so I can lose? No, when I bug you for money, it's to make impact. Yeah. Right? I bug people for money. I raised half a million dollars in my first race. Why? To get ballot access. To put 107 libertarians into office. That's impact. Yes, yeah. give, me give me money for that. Right? <laughs> if I'm going to do that, give me money. Yes. But I'm going to have some, some vanity run so I can say I ran against AOC. Give me money for that. What a jerk I am. <laughs> It would what help a your show, probably. Yeah, you know, what a, to, get my, to make my show better? <laughs> what a jerk I am to do that, right? Yeah. If I'm going to beg you for money and bug you for money and tell you to show up and do the work, well, it's because we're trying to achieve something. That's why I've only run twice. People think I've run a lot. I've only run twice. Both times when I thought I could, I could break this system in New York State. Mm -hmm. The first time I did, the second time I failed. Yeah. But both times I was trying to. So let me ask something about you that I don't, that I don't know. Where did this dedication to the Libertarian Party come, were you always a Libertarian? No. Like what, like what happened here? Because you're like a, you are a, probably the most dedicated person to the Libertarian Party, third party, not voter Republican Democrat that, uh, that I've met. Uh, it, how did that happen? It's funny, I'm not really sure. I grew up as a kid in the Bronx, in New York, and my parents were very much Democrats. Um, you were, uh, Republicans were bad because they're Republicans. That's the reason. That's the reason. Oh, he's got R, he's clearly bad. That was just the reason. But I never voted for that. I didn't care, right? I was a kid. But I joined the Marine Corps at 17. And if you know the Marine Corps, it's a very conservative branch, the most conservative branch of the, uh, of the military. And all my senior leadership, they were very conservative. Most of them were Vietnam vets at the time. I joined the Marine Corps in the 80s. Most of my senior leadership, they were all Vietnam vets. So I think I became more conservative when I joined the Marine Corps because my environment was. So my first vote was actually, um, I voted for George H.W. Uh, um, Bush, the first Bush. Didn't really like that at all. Um, and then I just went Perot, because I thought the system sucked. Yeah. So I voted Perot twice. Then I voted Nader twice. Now, I couldn't have told you any of the policies of Nader or Perot, none. I probably still don't know, but I didn't know. But I thought, they're, they're the rebels. They're not, I didn't know what the Libertarian Party was, to be yeah, yeah. I actually thought that Nader replaced Perot, I didn't know there were separate parties. Okay. I thought it was just one party, like mm -hmm. the third party. And that, that's what I thought. I'm being, I'm being very forward. I, I, was, I was ignorant to the system. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought. And then Barack Obama came in 2008, after I voted NATO in 2004. And I believed the hype. I bought it. I bought the hope and change. I bought, I said, this is it. This yeah. is the guy. Jesus is here. It's good. <laughs> He's come. <laughs> He's come. He's it's it. It's worked. I, I bought it. And that's what broke me. Because within two years, I realized I had been taken. Within two years, I realized it was all a lie. Within two, I was so, and the reason I was so angry by that one was because the other guys I voted for, I just voted for because whatever. I believed Obama. Like, I, mm -hmm. I bought it. Does that make yeah. sense? Like, yeah. I bought it. Yeah. So I was betrayed. The other guys, I was like, ah, whatever. Right? I was betrayed. So I, I, was, I was like, I'm not going to vote anymore. Like, I was like, I'm done. I'm not voting anymore. None of this matters. System's broken. Who cares? I'm going work on my business. I was a business owner at the time. I'm just going to work on my business. I'm just going to do that. And then I heard Gary Johnson speak in 2012. And when Gary Johnson spoke, I was like, oh, he's an entrepreneur like me. He's speaking like me. Huh. All right. I'm in. So I supported Gary Johnson's campaign. And then I supported my governor's campaign in 2014. Uh, Michael McDermott, he passed away, but he ran for governor of New York State. And I was all in. I was giving him money. I was his driver. Um, I was a debate prep guy. Like, I was all the things. I'm a consultant, business consultant for a living. That's what I do. Yeah, yeah. So I train, coach, all those things for a living. So I could easily take a, a candidate on board. That was easy. My skill set was right there. So I started helping candidates out. That's what I, what I do well. Then I thought, you know what? 2016, Gary Johnson's running again. I'm going to be his VP. I'm going to be his support staff. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be his guy. And I lost that by 31 votes. Not that I'm counting. Nobody's counting. <laughs> Stop. You're counting. I'm not counting. You're counting. Just saying 31 votes. Who cares? Yeah. Just a number. I'm not at all bitter. Uh, in any case, I lost. And then I said, you know what? I'm going to run for governor and make change. And that got me going. And when I ran in 2018, I saw how corrupt it was. 
that made me want to run again in 2022. So the run in 2018 showed me how terrible it was, how nobody wants to actually win, how the grift is everything, how it's all pay to play. And I also realized how the Libertarian Party is no way near ready for this. Yeah. Not even close. I mean, we're not ready for this. So I said, I'm gonna run again in 2022 to fix this, break this hole, to show them what to do. And they came at me with lawfare, which I, was un I wasn't ready for. The system broke me in 2018, but I had learned enough to break the system in 2022. And they knew that. That's why they sued me off the ballot. They were like, no, no, he'll break our system, so just lose, use the law. And I wasn't ready for that. Yeah. So, but now, ha, 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 I'm ready for both. So now <laughs> they need a third way to get me because yeah. I'm now prepared for both. I had the lawyers. I know how to raise the money. I can break them this time, those two. Let's hope there's no other way. Wait, this time? If I run again in 2026. Oh, okay, okay. Yes, uh, for every four years for governor. Yeah. 2018, 2022, and it, I'm going to try to run in 2026. Okay. All right. So did I, I went long, but did I answer your question at least? You absolutely answered my question. Okay, yeah. Good. So you do uh, the sharp way. And by the way, it's how often are you streaming that? Is that an everyday thing? I feel like I no. see you on Twitter a lot. I, I, I wish it was more often. I'm yeah. bad at this. I work, so I can't do, I can't, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But you're I, saying I don't work? No, you don't. This isn't work. Come on now. We're happy and you were having fun. Come on. <laughs> No, uh, that's, the, that's the thing. You know, doing a show takes actual work. Mm -hmm. You know this. So I'm not just, I'm preaching to the choir here, but other people may not realize. It seems cool, like, which well, is easy, doing nothing. But it is work to put these things together. And since I do other work doing my show, I don't always do as much as I want to. But I tend to put out at least two hours of live content every week. If I get hot and bothered, I do like 14, 16 hours of, of live content. Okay. So I always do live content um, because I want people to go back and forth. I want them to know it's me. Yeah. When I go across New York State, I've done probably 500 events across New York State in the past seven, eight years. All of them are unscripted, live, no notes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Well, I recommend everyone check that out. I'm sure. I'm sure everyone already. You don't need us. Google to Larry tell you Sharp. About that. I yeah. told you, I'm the man. Yeah. The one and only. <laughs> I'm the one and only. Google Larry Sharp. I'm on Twitter, um, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, all the things. Wait, what's Twitter? I'm sorry, X. Okay. No, I'm sorry, I didn't know you were, I didn't know you were, an, you were Elon Stan. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, you're an Elon Stan. All right, Larry, thank yeah. you so much for your time today. Good to see you, my friend. That was great. Have a good one.